Uh, all right. So next we got Jerome. He's going to tell us what's beyond messaging on XMPP. Mm. Take it away. Uh, hi, everybody. And first of all, thank you for being uh, present at this time. I know it's difficult on Sunday, so thank you. My name is Jérôme Poisson. I'm uh, working uh, during the day on uh, uh, the free software for journalists in a Czech company. And by night, I become an XMPP developer, and I work on uh, XMPP client. So I have, we have 20 minutes together, and I will try to convince you that XMPP is not only an instant messaging protocol, and it can do a really large uh, panel of things. Uh, let's start with some common criticism. Uh, XMPP, uh, I've seen some kind of XMPP bashing lastly, like during the last few months or years. And uh, these uh, arguments are coming uh, quite often. So XMPP is supposed to be too hard, or it's bad because it's XML, or uh, it's supposed to be not uh, web technology friendly, and uh, it's supposed to be uh, too extensible. So let's start with the first one, which I don't really understand, but people think that something, when it's old, we have to throw it out. Uh, actually, it's quite the opposite, in my opinion. Uh, XMPP celebrates uh, this year its 20, 20th birthday, and it's still here, it's still working, it's stable, so it's actually more a uh, good sign, and it means that it's, it's rock solid and you can use it. Uh, I have uh, written some technology which uh, we would have to throw before XMPP because they are too old. So I guess if we get rid of this technology, we will have some trouble without HTTP or TCP IP. And OK, maybe for some of them it will be good <coughs> JavaScript, for instance. OK, the second one is XMPP is bad because it's XML, and XML is not JSON, and JSON is really so great. So uh, I took this example directly for the RFC standard. And as you can see, there is no much uh, useless data, actually. And uh, it's quite usable. I'm working with it nearly every day, and I can tell you it's really no problem to work with it. Uh, today, we have really good uh, XML parser. Uh, I'm using Python, and there is LXML, which is really performant. Uh, also, we have some uh, encryption uh, uh, extensions, so on the wire is not big, uh, so that's good. And most of all, in uh, XML, there is something that doesn't exist in namespace in uh, JSON, and which is really great. It's the namespace, namespaces, and uh, it's used actually for the extensibility, and it's really a major feature of uh, XML. Uh, XMPP is supposed to be not web technology friendly. Uh, this is absolutely false. Uh, the first proof of that is that there are web technologies which are uh, explained in the standard. For instance, there is a RFC which explains how to use XMPP with um, uh, WebSockets. Uh, there is some uh, extension which explains how to use WebRTC with XMPP. It's done by some client. Uh, and um, we have uh, some pure uh, browser, pure JavaScript uh, module without uh, even needing to have a, a server, which are working great. We have some web-only client, Converse or GSXA. And even if you use a backend, uh, the backend will do most of the XML things and, um, the, uh, and will communicate with uh, JSON, for instance, a WebSocket with the front end. So it's, uh, XMPP is absolutely web technology friendly, and there is no issue to use it with uh, web technology. OK, the last one, which is actually the main uh, subject of, uh, of today, is uh, XMPP is supposed to be too extensible. Actually, XMPP is uh, managing different use cases. Uh, so there is chat messaging, but there is also blogging, file sharing, video, and this is very different fields. And that's the reason why we need uh, extensi extensibility. But we have a really good uh, discovery mechanism. If you talk to a server or to another client, we can detect the features which, has, uh, which are uh, handled, handled by the, uh, the other entity and adapt to the feature. Uh, we, uh, we have seen that it has been useful also for uh, evolu evolution. 20 years ago, nobody would imagine that today everybody will use XMPP on a mobile, on a mobile phone with new constraints on battery life, on uh, unstable network. 
and uh, XMPP has shown that it has been able to be used and it's working really well nowadays on, uh, mobiles, on mobiles. And we have a really large ecosystem which can work together. There are a lot of XMPP clients which are working together. And also uh, the community has been done some uh, move to try also to mitigate the issue of different uh, features. Every year there is a compliance suite. Like if you want today to create a new XMPP client, you have a list of the most important XEP. To XEP is for XMPP extension protocol, and is the extension of XMPP. So the list of major XEP you have to uh, implement to have a modern, uh, modern client. And also, uh, lastly, we have seen a compliant uh, tester for server. You can run it on your server. You will have a mark and like the major XEP that you have or you are missing and the step to uh, fix that. Okay, uh, but the extensibility of XMPP is this major strain and actually it's the reason why I am personally using XMPP. So the idea is that like XXEP, so X extension, is, is doing one thing and is doing it well. So if it rings some bell, it's the same thing as a Unix, as a Unix uh, philosophy. And so far it has proved to be quite a good philosophy. So when there is a new extension, somebody is uh, proposing it and we are discussing it on a standard mailing list and it's public and we have different people with different backgrounds, server, uh, video, chat, etc. with pertinent remarks and uh, we hopefully are, are trying to select the best technical option each time for a new feature. So it's actually uh, wrong to see XMPP as a world thing and just an instant messaging thing but it's actually a collection of different technologies which are coherent and which are collaborating and working together gracefully. So this is really the way you should see XMPP. It's not something like unique, but it's really a mix of different things collaborating. So let's have a look at two of the major XMPP extensions. The first one is Jingle. Jingle is known for being uh, used by, uh, for video conferencing. It's what is behind Jitsimit, for instance, if you know it. Uh, but it's actually a way to establish a stream session. When you have two devices, it's to create a stream. And if it's possible, it will be peer-to-peer. Uh, -peer. If it's not possible, you will find another way to create this stream. It's also a way to manage the stream. So if you are uh, on a phone and your connection, you change your connection from Wi-Fi to uh, 3G or 4G, uh, uh, Jingle allows you to uh, adapt it. And uh, you have also other uh, things like uh, encryption, like you can have, uh, you can say, I want this stream to be encrypted, and uh, and yeah, it will manage this. So it is used, uh, so of course for video, but also for file sharing. It's used in games uh, if you want to communicate between your uh, client and server, etc. The other one is uh, PubSub. PubSub is short for Publish Subscribe. It's a way actually to send data to a service. The service will uh, will manage it, and if you can uh, subscribe to this service, and this means that you will be notified if something change. Uh, for instance, uh, the, dat uh, the data has been modified, deleted, or a new data is present, so you will get notified for that. So you use the term nodes and items. If you compare to, uh, it's, it's kind of the database of XMPP. So if you compare to SQL. A node will be the table and items will be the row. If you compare to something like MongoDB, a node will be the collection and items will be the document. So it's actually a kind of decentralized database uh, based on XMPP. It's the observer pattern. Uh, there is a handling of permission system. So you, can't, uh, you have a role and depending on the role, you know if you can uh, read or write on a, on a node and uh, that's really helpful. And it's also extensible, so if you want to do search, for instance, you can use another extension, which is called Message Archive Management, and you can do full text search, for instance, or search, uh, we use it on uh, blogging to search for uh, tags, for instance. So yes, that's also something really useful. So uh, some example of how you can use XMPP. So the first one is file sharing. When I'm talking about file sharing, I'm not talking about just sending a file on a, on a chat room, but about uh, sharing like a world directory to uh, some devices. So imagine that uh, you, you, you are with, uh, with your phone and you take pictures during the day and or a video and you go back home and you want to transfer this video to your uh, desk computer. 
you have nothing to do, uh, XMPP will handle everything. You have one client on the desktop, one on the mobile phone, and you can uh, access your picture, download it if you need, or, uh, or the video. The other way, it will be um, it will be peer to peer if because you are in your local uh, area network, so it will establish a peer to peer connection, and your data will not go to a like server on another continent, like it will be the case for. Uh, Dropbox, for instance, it will go directly from one device to the other device. Uh, the other way to use it is uh, using components. Uh, in this case, it's something similar to own or Nextcloud or uh, Dropbox. Like you, you, put, you push your files on a, on a service, and it will be available for uh, other people or other devices. And uh, yeah, there's a new extension about uh, using uh, OMEMO encryption with Jingle. Uh, so in this case, you will have end-to-end -end encryption in addition to uh, what I have said. Uh, an extension of file sharing is using it for photo album. So we still use the base. That's the point of XMPP. We always reuse uh, technology, existing technology. We try to not reinvent the wheel. So for photo album, uh, it's a speci specialization of uh, file sharing. And we just use a fighter saying, OK, I just want video or just want images. Uh, we use another extension which manages uh, thumbnails. So instead of downloading a wall, um, several gigabyte, uh, megabyte uh, image, uh, you will have a small, uh, small one. And uh, we are using blogging that we see just after to see uh, to, to use command. So this is a screenshot of a photo album uh, handled by XMPP with some commands. So because it's SMPP, it's decentralized, it's federating, and uh, it's, uh, it's neat. Uh, about blogging, uh, it's a combination of another standard, which is Atom. I guess you know it. It's something similar to RSS. It's uh, used to describe a blog. And uh, yes, because we try also to use other um, standards when they exist. And we just uh, combine that with uh, PubSub. You can see it, uh, see it sorry, on uh, the XEP uh, 0277. And uh, yeah, it's, it's quite easy. It's quite functional. There are two clients nowadays uh, doing it, like uh, Movim and uh, Salut was the one on which I'm working. Uh, so this is a screenshot of uh, Blog Engine, once again, decentralized and federating. Uh, forum is another extension of uh, blogging when you use PubSub to uh, have a hierarchy uh, the way you and after you go the way you want and after you go inside the forum and you set uh, your node in a way that anybody can uh, can publish inside and this is a screenshot of a forum made with XMPP. Okay, another one is Ticket. Uh, ticket is actually uh, just um, associating another extension, which is called Dataform, which is a way to uh, putting data type on uh, your item. For instance, you're saying this field uh, is a title, so it's a string. This field is a priority, pri priority it's an int. Uh, this field is a date, uh, etc. And you, you use uh, one ticket uh, one item per, uh, per ticket. So this is uh, a screenshot of our um, uh, ticket handling. So we have bug report and feature request. It's uh, yeah, because for some uh, ideological reason we are not on GitHub. So uh, we do this. And it's uh, once again decentralized and federating. And I'm not sure if there is any other uh, decentralized uh, ticket handler at the, at the moment. And also, the system is really flexible, so it could be used for uh, other things, like a shopping list, for instance. You just change the fields you want to use. Or, uh, or a to-do list. It could be used for a to-do list or actually any kind of uh, list. And if you take ticket and you just extend it a little bit, you can have merge requests. So what is merge request? It's just a ticket where you have one of the fields which is used to have a, a blob, which will be the, all the patch you want to uh, merge to a project. This is a screenshot, a screenshot of, a merge of a merge request done by XMPP. So we have the basis of a decentralized code forge made on uh, XMPP, which I think it's quite cool. 
Another thing is uh, events. Uh, event is the same thing as in Meetup or Facebook, like you just have an image, a date, uh, some information, and people can go and use PubSub again and say, I will come, I will not come, maybe I will come. And uh, yeah, that's it, you know what it is. So this is a screenshot of uh, events. Uh, the design is not wonderful, but yeah, you see you have the list of uh, guests and, uh, and the image. Uh, okay, this is the uh, last one. So we are not talking about Jingle and PubSub anymore, but just two other uh, quite cool uh, extension you can uh, thing you can do with XMPP. First one is HTTP authentication. Uh, the idea there is you go on a website, you don't want to create an account, you just enter your uh, Jabber ID, which is your identi identifier. Uh, on your phone, you will get a message saying this website wants to authenticate with a code to check. Yes, no, and that's it. So that's quite uh, quite easy. It starts to be handled by a couple of clients. So if you make a website, it would be nice to use it. The other one is universal remote control. Uh, the idea is we have another extension which is managing uh, generic commands, a kind of uh, XML RPC or something similar, but based on uh, XMPP. And we just associ associate this with uh, MPRI, which is a free desktop uh, specification, which is done to uh, control a media player like VLC, MPV, or, uh, etc. So uh, if you have a, a mobile, uh, you can just get on your couch and control your media player thanks to uh, XMPP. Something a bit similar to uh, uh, Kadi Connect. Uh, that's it for the talk. Now we have some room if you have any questions. Some useful links. So, the first one is a list of uh, official extensions. So if you want to uh, look deeper into the one I've mentioned or other one, you can check there. You can find the links to the libraries I've mentioned uh, in this uh, there. This is a link for uh, our project. So this is the official website, uh, some demo. I kind of had the bad idea to upload to um, update just before first demo, so it's kind of broken right now, but in a couple of days it should be all right. And this is my personal blog where I'm talking a lot about uh, experimentation we are doing with SMPP and uh, take some, some, sometimes some technical background and uh, explaining how we do. Also, if uh, by any chance you are living in Germany or around or able to move, in March we will have a sprint in uh, Berlin. And even if you are absolutely new to XMPP, you are more than welcome. And uh, if you want to learn a bit more about it or uh, to try to do something with that, uh, it's a good occasion to do that. So thank you for attending. And if you have any question, We have time for some questions. If anybody has a question, I'll pass on the mic. Anybody? Um, with. Um, the X XMPP, so as a background, I did some work with XMPP, now I'm more with C, but that was a long time ago. Um, for the um, mobile apps, uh, are there some optimization to save the, the library? Because you presented some uh, extensions here, but you know, in the way of like this push notification mechanism that you can use or you know, some optimization yeah, for the we, mobile world, to put it. So, yes, we have different uh, extension for mobile. The first one is push, because uh, on some platform like iOS, uh, you have to go through the Apple push mechanism. So it's why with privacy in mind, so you don't send the message, you just say, hey, there is something new, uh, please uh, wake up my client and I will handle the uh, real stuff. Uh, we have also uh, something which is called stream management. Uh, it's a way to say uh, if you are in a subway, for instance, your connection is, is getting bad, it's, and uh, it will try to reopen without doing the world connection things. We have uh, client state indication when you say uh, when you don't see your, uh, front, your uh, front end, uh, this app is sleeping, so just send me really major messages, and besides that, I don't want to waste the bandwidth. And so, yes, we have this kind of things, and it's really efficient. If, if you try some mobile uh, clients, it's really efficient nowadays. Okay. Other questions? No? Okay, okay. so thank, thank you. you for attending.